Hussein Shahid Surawardi Urdu HSN Shahid Shurdi Bengali Hasina Sahida Surawardi the 8th of September 1892 to the 5th of December 1963 was a Bengali politician and a lawyer who served as the 5th Prime Minister of Pakistan appointed in this capacity on the 12th of September 1956 until resigning on the 17th of October 1957 Born into an illustrious Bengali Muslim family in Midnapore, Surawardi was educated in Calcutta and was trained as a barrister in Oxford where he practised law at the Gray's Inn in Great Britain. Upon returning to India in 1921, his legislative career started with his election to the Bengal Legislative Assembly on Muslim League's platform but joined the Swaraj Party when he was invited to be elected as the Deputy Mayor of Calcutta under Chittaranjan Das. After Chittaranjan Das's death in 1925, Surawardi promoted the Muslim unity on a Muslim League's platform, and began advocating for the two-nation theory. After the general elections held in 1934, Surawardi pushed for strengthening the Muslim League's political program and asserted his role as becoming one of the founding fathers of Pakistan. After joining the Bengal's government in 1937, Surawardi assumed the only Muslim League-led government after the general elections held in 1945, and faced criticism from the Indian press of his alleged role in massive riots took place in Calcutta in 1946. As the partition of India loomed in 1947, Surawardi championed an alternative to the partition of Bengal, the idea of an independent united Bengal not federated with either India or Pakistan. This proposal enjoyed some support from Muhammad Ali Jinnah, but ultimately was not adopted. Nonetheless, Surawardi worked towards integration of East Bengal into the Federation of Pakistan but partied away with the Muslim League when he joined hands to establish the Awami League in 1949. During the legislative elections held in 1954, Surawardi provided his crucial political support to the United Front that defeated the Muslim League. In 1953, Surawardi joined the Prime Minister Muhammad Ali Bogra's Ministry of Talents as a Minister of Law and Justice and served until 1955. After supporting the vote of no confidence motion at the National Assembly that removed Prime Minister Muhammad Ali, the three party coalition government of Muslim League, Awami League, and the Republican Party, appointed Surawardi to the office of Prime Minister, promising to address the issue of economic disparities between the Western Pakistan and the Eastern Pakistan, resolving the energy conservation crises and reforming the nation's military. His foreign policy resulted in increased dependency towards the U.S. foreign aid to the country and pioneering a strategic partnership with the United States against the Soviet Union, and recognized the China by supporting the One China policy. On the home front, he faced pressure from the business and stock community over his economic policy to distribute the taxation and federal revenues between the East and West, where the controversial issue of national integration had been brought to fruition by the nationalists. After failing to bring a resolution against President Iskander Mirza at the parliament to seek vote of confidence, Surawardi unexpectedly resigned from his post amid a possible retaliation by President Mirza and defections from his party in favour of the Maulana Basani group in the Awami League. <laughs> Early years Topic. Family background and education Hussein Surawardi was born on 8 September 1892 in Midnapur, Bengal in India into an illustrious Bengali Muslim family known for their wealth, education, and gentry background, who claimed to be the direct descendant and ancestors of the first caliphate. His father, Justice Sir Zahid Surawardi, was a jurist at the Calcutta High Court, and his mother, Banu, was the daughter of Maulana Ubaidullah Surawardi, who was a prolific Urdu language writer and was the first Indian woman to have passed the senior Cambridge examinations. His elder brother, Hassan, a linguist, found a great successful career as a diplomat with Pakistan's foreign ministry. Shasta Surawardi Ikramullah was his niece. His uncles, Hassan Surawardi served in the British Indian Army as a military physician while Sir Abdullah Surawardi was a barrister. After his matriculation from the Calcutta Madrasa, Surawardi academically excelled when he went enrolled to attend the Calcutta University in 1906, attending the St. Xavier's College where he graduated with B.Sc. in Mathematics in 1911. In 1913, Surawardi attained his M.A. in Arabic language and earned a scholarship to attend the Oxford University for his higher studies. 
His gentry background allowed him to settle in England comfortably while attending the St. Catharines College of Oxford University, where he attained MA in political science and graduated with the BCL degree in 1920. After leaving the Oxford, Sirwardy was called to bar at the Gray's Inn where he was trained as barrister at law in 1922-23. Political career in India Deputy Mayorship of Calcutta and Legislation 1922 After his training as the barrister at law in England, Surawardi returned to India where he began his practice at the Calcutta High Court in 1922–23, building his reputation as a competent lawyer. During this time, he joined the Muslim League and secured his elections as a member of the Bengal Legislative Assembly. His legislative career took prominence during the times of the Khilafat movement, a conservative Islamic movement in India, and had remained associate with the movement for several years. In 1924-25, Surawardi was appointed as deputy mayor of the Calcutta Corporation when he joined the Swaraj Party led by the mayor of Kolkata Chittaranjan Das. In 1926, he broke with the Swaraj party after the Hindu-Muslim riots took place in Calcutta, and represented the accused Muslims at the Calcutta High Court, and began encouraging the trade strikes to maintain pressure on the Congress party. In 1930s, he strengthened the political program of the Muslim League, supporting the concept of Pakistan, and began mobilizing his support in favor of the Pakistan movement. In 1936, he became the Secretary General of the Muslim League's Bengal chapter and successfully defended his constituency in general elections held in 1934 37. His outspoken advocacy for the Pakistan movement further strengthened the position and political program of the Muslim League, and was appointed to head the Ministry of Commerce and Labour from 1937 until 1943 under the provincial administration of Premier of Bengal Abul Qasim Fazlul Haq. In 1943, Premier K. Nazimuddin eventually appointed him to lead the Ministry of Civil Supply and it was during his tenureship when the famine took place in Bengal in 1943. Although, British Administrator and Governor of Bengal Richard Casey was of the view of considering Premier K. Nazimuddin as incapable, there were major allegations that levelled on him towards deliberating causing the famine and doing very little to prevent it. Surawardi, on the other hand, contradicted when claiming that it was the central government in New Delhi and black marketers that had seized the transportation of rice and wheats to the presidency. On the other hand, Indian author, Madhushri Mukherjee, laid major responsibility of this famine to British Prime Minister Winston Churchill who wanted the ration for war efforts only and had refrained the US aid to Bengal. Surawardi was further accused of practicing the scorched earth policy to counter the Japanese army's advances in east and supervised to burn thousand fishing boats to block any potential movement of invading Japanese army troops. These measures aggravated starvation and famine and the relief was only ordered when Lord Wavell became the viceroy, using the Indian army to organize relief. However, by that time, the winter crop had arrived and famine conditions had already eased. After millions had earlier perished, the Indian press, notably the Hindu press, had become very critical of his role and the Bengali Hindus held him directly responsible for the famine. Topic: <laughs> Premiership and United Bengal, 1946-47. During the general elections held in 1945 in India, Surawardi campaigned against K. Nazimuddin for the premiership of Bengal, and secured enough political endorsement from the Muslim League that allowed him to form the provincial government as its prime minister the only Muslim League-led government in India in 1946. The Congress party had been very critical of his role and the government and limited the number of cabinet's departments by dismissing the Hindu members of his cabinet. By 1946-47, the support for the Pakistan movement among the Indian Muslims had become very popular and it became inevitable for the creation of the nation state through the partition of India by 1947. 
The issue of communalism based on the religious beliefs prevented the inclusion of Hindu majority districts of Punjab and Bengal in the Federation of Pakistan as the Congress Party and their allies the Hindu Mahasabha sought the division of these provinces on communal lines to prevent the violence, riots, and long-term border disputes. Surawardi joined hands with the demands of preventing the second partition of Bengal by endorsing the idea of independent United Bengal alongside with Surat Chandra Bose, K Shankar Roy, Abul Hashim, Satya Ranjan Bakshi and F. Q. Chaudhry, Surawardi reached a compromise with the Bose when he sought to form the coalition government between Congress Party's Bengal section with the Muslim League's Bengal division. Proponents of the plan urged the Indian public in Bengal to reject the communal divisions and uphold the vision of an independent but united Bengal. In a press conference held in New Delhi on 27 April 1947 Surawardi presented his plan for a united and independent Bengal and Abul Hashim issued a similar statement in Calcutta on 29 April. The issue of United Bengal was met with favourable views and backing of Muhammad Ali Jinnah who saw it for the benefits for Bengali Muslims. Jinnah viewed this plan in a long-term geostrategic point in believing that independent Bengal led by Muslim Premier would forged a closer alliance with Pakistan than it would with India. Despite Jinnah's backing, the plan was fiercely opposed by K. Nazimuddin, his brother K. Shahabuddin, Nurul Amin, and Muhammad Akram who wanted to integration with Pakistan. Amongst Bengali Hindus, the plan was not supported, therefore supporting for the creation of the West Bengal the partition. During this time, Surawardi led massive rallies on every Friday for the cause of independence movement to separate from India, further fueling tensions with Congress Party. Topic Direct Action Day the 16th of August 1946, Surawardi and other Muslim League leaders reportedly delivered provocative speeches reminding the Bengali Muslims of the historical Islamic victory and urged them to follow the same way on 16 August. The popular historian, Devendra Panagrahi, in his famous book India's Partition, The Story of Imperialism in Retreat quotes from the 13 August 1946 issue of Muslim League mouthpiece The Star of India, Muslims must remember that, it was in Ramazan that the permission for jihad was granted by Allah. It was in Ramazan that the Battle of Badr, the first open conflict between Islam and heathenism, was fought and won by 313 Muslims and again it was in Ramazan that 10,000 Muslims under the Holy Prophet conquered Mecca and established the Kingdom of Heaven and the Commonwealth of Islam in Arabia. The Muslim League is fortunate that it is starting its action in this holy month. According to historian Juthika Roy, Jinnah gave a free hand to Surawardi to terrorize the Hindus and start a pogrom against Hindus. On 16 August 1946, the massive bloody riots erupted in Calcutta, killing scores of Hindus at the hands of rioters. Surawardi attempted to control the situation by unsuccessfully calling for peace and deployment of the Indian Army in Calcutta with no success. The riots ended with thousand deaths and the Indian press blaming Surawardi of obstructing the police work, which is well documented by several authors and eyewitnesses. According to authorities, the riots were instigated by members of the Muslim League and its affiliate Volunteer Corps after listening to the speeches made by Nazimuddin and Surawardi, in the city in order to enforce the declaration by the Muslim League that Muslims were to suspend all business to support their demand for an independent Pakistan. However, supporters of the Muslim League believed that the Congress Party was behind the violence in an effort to weaken the fragile Muslim League government in Bengal, further generating the controversy about the real culprits. Historian Hoya Chatterjee allocates much of the responsibility to Surawardi, for setting up the confrontation and failing to stop the rioting, but points out that Hindu leaders were also culpable. A senior intelligence operative wrote to a senior British officer based at Fort William after the Great Calcutta Killings after the Calcutta riots revealing Surawardi's villainous nature. He wrote, There is hardly a person in Calcutta who has a good word for Surawardi, respectable Muslims included. For years he has been known as the King of the Gundas and my own private opinion is that he fully anticipated what was going to happen, and allowed it to work itself up, and probably organized the disturbance with his Gunda gangs as this type of individual has to receive compensation every now and again. According to Tathagata Roy, the governor of Tripura, Surawardi had pre-planned the riot long back, evident from the fact that demographic changes were being made in the Calcutta police constabulary. 
Even the Bangladeshi historian Harun or Rashid, in his book The Foreshadowing of Bangladesh, Bengal Muslim League and Muslim Politics, 1906–1947, also disclosed the diabolic role of Surawardi in orchestrating riots against the Hindus in a pre-planned manner and safeguarding the Muslim goons from the police. Eventually, the United Bengal Plan eventually failed which had earlier been facing the opposition of the Muslim League led by K. Nazimuddin, Congress Party, the Hindu Mahasabha and the Communist Party of India. Eventually, the Bengali Hindus voted for the partition that created the West Bengal joining the Union of India, and East Bengal was left with no choice but to join the Federation of Pakistan on 14 August 1947. Public service in Pakistan Law and Health Ministries in Coalition Government On 14 August 1947, Surawardi lost the control of the Bengal Division of the Muslim League and lost the election when K. Nazimuddin was elected for the Chief Minister of East Bengal. After the partition of India, Surawardi remained in Calcutta and made calls for peace when sighting help from Mahatma Gandhi. He returned in the 5th of March 1949 to Pakistan after Jinnah's death and K Nazimuddin becoming the Governor General in 1948. Surawardi was forced out from the Muslim League, but the latter co-founded the Awami Muslim League alongside with the conservative cleric Maulana Basani and others in 1949. He shifted from Muslim unity to greatly espousing the Bengali nationalism, becoming critical of the government of East Pakistan. In 1950, he began opposing the conservative agenda of Prime Minister K. Nazimuddin, and forged an alliance with the Communist Party and other left oriented parties, which was known as the United Front. After the dismissal of Prime Minister K. Nazimuddin in 1953, Surawardi joined the Ministry of Talents as a Minister of Law and Justice under Prime Minister Muhammad Ali Bogra, taking responsibility of drafting the Constitution of Pakistan. He also oversaw the implementation of the unification of the West Pakistan as a counterbalance to the East, in a prospect for providing the better governance. During the legislative elections in held in 1954 in East, Surawardi led the United Front against the Muslim League led by Nurul Amin, which saw the landslide victory of the United Front. The Awami League forged a three party alliance with the Muslim League and the Republican Party to form the coalition government in the National Assembly. During this time, he was appointed as health minister in the three party coalition government led by Prime Minister Muhammad Ali. During this time, he also acted as leader of the opposition, alongside with the I.I. Chudrigar of the Pakistan Muslim League. After Prime Minister Muhammad Ali refused to support the motion to investigation the Muslim League's allegations on Republican Party led by its president Faroz Khan in 1956, Surawardi went on to support the vote of no confidence movement by Muslim League against its own Prime Minister. After supporting the successful vote of no confidence movement at the National Assembly, the Awami League successfully held negotiations with the Muslim League and the Republican Party to appoint Surawardi as the new Prime Minister. Prime Minister of Pakistan 1956 Surawardi administration, internal affairs and constitutional reforms On 12 September 1956, Chief Justice M. Munir, administrated the oath of Prime Minister Hussein Surawardi in Governor's House in Karachi, then federal capital of the country, initially promising to review the policy of one-unit status to the nationalists at the National Assembly, Prime Minister Surawardi backed out to overturn this scheme. At the National Assembly, Prime Minister Surawardi faced politics over two issues pressed by the nationalists, the one unit and the Electoral College. The issue of one unit was revived by the nationalists who called for the restoration of the status of the four provinces, beginning to hold massive rallies all around the West. Prime Minister Surawardi, however, showed less concern over this issue which came at the interests of the East as he had earlier reached the compromise in favor of being appointed as the Prime Minister. 
Though, the East had not objected the implementation of the one unit as they were not above the factional battles motivated by personal interests, the West's multi-ethnic diversity background had effectively raised this issue which had won public support and sympathy. Nonetheless, there were no concrete steps taken by Surwardi government to address this issue and it was not until the Yahya administration when it was repealed in 1970. At the National Assembly, the Awami League initiated the constitutional work on reviving the joint electorate system but faced strong pressure and opposition from the Muslim League to implement this issue. The Muslim League had called for the separate electoral system which had subsequent public support over this issue. The East had favored the joint electorate system. In 1956, Prime Minister Surwardi approved to request the three year extension of Army Commander Lt. Gen. Ayub Khan while approving the appointment of VADM. HMS Chaudhry as the first native naval commander both men served to command their services until 1959. To address the issue of energy conservation in West, Surawardi established the Pakistan Atomic Energy Commission PAEC, inviting its chair to Dr. Nazir Ahmad, a physicist. The nuclear power program was intended to be for peaceful usages when he affirmed his obligations towards the clauses of the Atoms for Peace Initiative. When his science advisor, Dr. Salimazaman Siddiqui, presented the plan to acquire the NRX reactor from Canada, Surawardi reportedly vetoed instead releasing funds for the U.S.-based pool-type reactor from the United States in 1956. U.S. <laughs> aid and the economic policy In 1956, Prime Minister Surawardi halted the National Finance Commission program, NFC program to allocate the taxed revenue equally between the West and East. Prime Minister Surawardi relied heavily upon the U.S. aid to the country to meet the food shortages, requesting U.S. President for shipment of the wheat flour and rice on a regular basis to Pakistan. In East, there were reports of another widespread famine, in which, the wheat, potatoes, rice, were being sent from the U.S. Foods and West's Faji Foundation to the East on regular basis. The central government led by Prime Minister Surawardi focused towards the implementation of the planned economy. His relations with the stock exchange and the business community deteriorated when he announced of distributing the $10 million ICA aid between West and East, and establishing the shipping corporation at the expense of West's revenues. Massive labor strikes broke out in West against his economic policy in major cities of Pakistan. Eventually, leaders of the stock exchange met with President Mirza to address their concerns and issues. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Foreign Policy. Prime Minister Surwardi directed the foreign policy towards aligning with the United States against the Soviet Union, and was seen as a pro-American political figure in the country. Surawardi harbored strong anti-Soviet views and advocated for strong pro-Western and pro-American policy at the public circles, putting himself at odds with the policy of his own party, the Awami League. He is considered to be one of the pioneers of Pakistan's foreign policy aimed, directed, and set towards excessively supporting the United States and their cause, a policy that was pursued by the successive administrations. On July 10, 1957, Prime Minister Surawardi paid a state visit to the United States where he met with President Dwight Eisenhower and accepted his request to lease out an Air Force base to the United States Air Force that would be in use for the signals intelligence purposes against the Soviet Union. The incident in 1960 severely compromised the national security of Pakistan when Soviet Union eventually discovered the base through interrogating its pilot. In return, the United States distributed tilde $2.142 billion in shape of giving the supersonic F-104 Starfighter and M-48 Patton tanks and dispatching the assistance group to the Pakistan's military. After his visit to the United States, Prime Minister Surawardi was invited by the Soviet Union for a state visit but Surawardi complained of Soviet Union's attitude towards supporting India over the issue of Kashmir. He snubbed the Soviet Union's invitation by maintaining discreet silence. In 1956, Prime Minister Surawardi became the Pakistan's first Prime Minister to pay a state visit to China when he went to meet with Chinese Premier Zhou Enlai in Beijing, taking with him the entire diplomatic mission including the Pakistan ambassador to China, Dr. Ahmed Ali, who had established the Pakistan embassy in Beijing and formed Pak-China friendship and strengthened the official diplomatic friendship between Pakistan and China. 
In 1957, he well received the Chinese Premier Zhou Enlai in Karachi when he reciprocated the visit in Karachi. In 1956-57, Prime Minister Surawardi accused India of supporting insurgency in different parts of the country, and leveled accusations against his counterpart, Indian Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru of undoing the partition of India. <laughs> Decline and resignation His economic policy and distribution of taxation revenues between West and East invited massive labor strikes as well as opposition from the stock exchange community and the private sector in 1956. Furthermore, his policy inclination towards the United States brought great ire and opposition from within the Awami League, which had been favoring the cleric Maulana Basani, who had been suspicious of American motives. Surawardi had strongly advocated for Pakistan's membership in the Southeast Asia Treaty Organization, which was aimed towards containing communism. He was in direct conflict with Basani on this issue. To the dismay of his party, Surawardi became closer to President Iskander Mirza on many issues. There were massive protests carried out in the East against Prime Minister Surawardi by the Awami League when the United States dispatched a military assistance advisory group to the Pakistani military. Eventually, Bashani and Yar Muhammad challenged him for the party's presidency, as both men had managed to consolidate the Awami League, but they failed to carry the party mass with them, intending to break President Mirza's control over parliament. Surawardi asked President Mirza to call a session of the National Assembly and seek a vote of confidence from the parliament, where Prime Minister Surawardi's allies had the majority. When President Mirza declined to call the session, Prime Minister Surawardi unsuccessfully attempted to bring a parliamentary resolution calling for the resignation in the parliament. His alignment with the United States at the expense of the Soviet Union caused Prime Minister Surawardi to eventually lose control over the presidency of the party to the junior leadership under Abdur Rashid Tarkabagish. Threatened with President Mirza's retaliation after the failed parliamentary resolution and facing to have lost the majority in the National Assembly, Prime Minister Surawardi faced the similar circumstances as his predecessor and surprisingly tendered his resignation on 17 October 1957. The news of his resignation led to protests in Karachi, but Prime Minister Surawardi downplayed the event in 1957. In 1960, he retired from politics, departing for Beirut. Public and personal life In 1920, Surawardi was arranged to marry, Fatima d. 1922, the daughter of Justice Sir Abdur Rahim who was also a politician. The marriage produced two children, Ahmed Shahab Surawardi and Jahan Surawardi. Ahmed died of pneumonia while studying in London whilst his daughter, Jahan was arranged to marry off to Shah Ahmed Suleiman, son of Justice Sir Shah Suleiman. After his passing in 1963, the Surawardi family remained active in national politics, and his granddaughter Shahida Jamil subsequently as a politician with the PML -N and briefly served as the law minister in 1999 and 2007. In 1940, Surawardi married Vera Alexandrovna Tischenko, a Russian theatre actress and dancer whom he knew through his older brother's work in Russia. Vera converted to Islam by taking the name of Begum Noor Jahan, and took the citizenship of Pakistan in 1947. She was a Russian actress of Polish descent from the Moscow Art Theatre and protégé of Olga Nipper. Surawardi and Vera Tischenko filed for a divorce in Sindh High Court, which was said to be bitter when the Sindh High Court ordered for distribution of Surawardi's wealth with Vera. The divorce was finalized in 1951. Following the divorce, Vera moved to the United States with their only son, Rashid Surawardi, known as Robert Ashby, who is a British actor living in London and briefly portrayed Jawaharlal Nehru in film Jinnah in 1998. Death He had been a chronic heart patient and died in Lebanon in 1963 due to a cardiac arrest. His death was officially due to complications from heart problems, though some have alleged he was poisoned, gassed or subjected to blunt trauma in his bedroom, although there is no proof of this. Legacy. Surawardi Udian, a historic maiden in Dhaka, formerly the Ramna Race Course. 
Shahid Surawardi Medical College Hospital, a major government hospital in Dhaka, Bangladesh. Government Shahid Surawardi College, a public college, located in Dhaka, Bangladesh. Kayaban e Surawardi, one of the main thoroughfares of Islamabad. Hussein Shahid Surawardi Hall, East Pakistan Agricultural University, now Bangladesh Agricultural University. In 2004, Surawardi was ranked number 19 in BBC's poll of the greatest Bengali of all time. Topic. See also. Bengali nationalism in Pakistan Conservatism in Pakistan Bengali culture in Pakistan American lobby in Pakistan Pro-Americanism in Pakistan Pakistan–United States relations Politics of Pakistan